Welcome. Today we're going to be going through installing a relatively new GameCube mod chip called Pico Boot. It harkens back to the Cube and Viper GC era of mod chips, if you even remember those, which injected custom software into the initial program loader, or IPL. IPL is just a fancy way of saying the first program that a computer loads when it's turned on. In the case of the GameCube here, you can think of it more like the modern day computer BIOS. It's the spinning cube portion that does all of the initial startup sequences, and if we were to inject code here, this will let us boot any homebrew we want right at the start of the GameCube without relying on temperamental disk drives that the Xeno GC relies on. Now what makes Pico Boot different from its predecessors is that it uses open source software and off-the-shelf components like the Raspberry Pi Pico to override the IPL. I don't mean to put down the hard work of all the other modders out there, but this also means that you aren't relying on someone else's custom-made hardware that will inevitably stop being produced. All you need is the Raspberry Pi Pico, an SD Gecko, or an SD to SP2, which these two you can actually even make yourself if you wanted to, and you're set to go. Now, before we crack into getting the GameCube open, we've got to flash the firmware onto the Raspberry Pi here. So let's get started. So everything including the installation guide is available on the Pico Boot GitHub page, and I recommend referencing this because whatever period of time you're looking at this instruction, the YouTube video might be out of date, so this will be updated more than the YouTube video. But either way, go to the releases page and download the latest release. Um, we're looking for the .uf2 file here, and that's what we're going to be putting onto our Raspberry Pi Pico. Just save it wherever it's most convenient. And then over on the Raspberry Pi Pico, hold down that boot cell button and plug it in with a micro USB or maybe USB-C eventually if they revise that board. And then it should just come up as a normal uh, storage device. And from here, we can open up our downloads folder where we downloaded it and drag and drop it on there. And after it copies for a little bit, it will automatically eject itself. And if it does automatically eject itself, then that should mean we are good to go and we should see the green LED show up on the board itself. So we can unplug it now and we can get back to the GameCube. Now when you go to take about your GameCube, there's actually three main differences that you need to consider. So go ahead and turn your GameCube onto its underside. I'll do this for all three of these because these are the three examples that I want to show you. Take a look at the label. The first thing you want to note is the doll model. If it's doll 001, then you'll have the specific type of soldering to do that you'll see on screen now. And again, I recommend consulting the GitHub page because that may update or they may change some things. But you'll see that that is different when it comes to soldering versus the DAW 101 you can see is also different. So those are the two main installation differences. The other thing to note is the serial ports at the bottom. Take a look and see if serial port number two is labeled. You can see on these ones, even though this is a DAW 001, it is not labeled. So open it up and you'll see nothing is there. It's a little more trivial, but all that means is that for you, you won't be able to use the SD2 SP2. Instead, you'll need to use the SD Gecko, which of course you can make yourself too. That's the main difference. The other way you can easily tell between the two different soldering methods is you can also just look on the bottom, say your label's missing. If you see it's got a digital AV out port, that's a doll 001. If it doesn't have a digital AV out port, that's a doll 101. So in case you're missing the label there, that's another way to tell. All right, let's get to disassembly. When talking about the GameCube, there isn't really any difference between any of the models. Um, it's going to be the exact same disassembly process. Whether you got 101, 001, different serial port, doesn't matter. First, start off with the game bit. You're going to take out the four screws at the bottom. Okay. Now, it's going to kind of want to come apart, so hold the whole thing, flip it back over. And see, you can see all the other screws have come out. They're all going to come out gradually. And we'll just lift off the top. No strings attached. So once you have the lid off, all you'll need is to take the screws out around the perimeter, which I'll walk you through here. And all you'll need for that are two Phillips screwdrivers, a Phillips 1 and a Phillips 2. First, we're going to take off the front panel, and to do so, you just pull at the clips on the side with your fingers. It should just come off fairly easily and pull forward. Careful of this ribbon, there's a bit of slack to it. And you're just going to pinch it at the blue portion of it and pull up. And that should just come out if you pull firmly but gently. Then with your Phillips one, we've got some screws right here at the front. I'll get a close-up of those in just a second. And we can go ahead and unscrew those with our Phillips one. 
And then that screw came out magnetically, but you can just pull off this little tab here and put that aside and the same with the other side. And now those are out. You can focus on pick a side. At this side, I'm gonna pick the fan side. So let's go ahead and take off those two screws right on the outside of the fan. If you want, you're gonna probably want to actually, is disconnect the power connector and unroute it right there. And we can just take our Phillips two and unscrew it and take the fan right off. Might have to maneuver that power connector. And you'll see three more screws are revealed. So we'll take those out as well. And now that we got this side done, we can rotate it again. We're gonna rotate it onto the back and similar to how we took the front off, we're gonna take this rear panel off just to pull at it or pull at those tabs if you're worried. Same idea, pull it off, put it aside. This one's just plastic. Um, and we can take these screws out here. There should be four of them. In this case, I've got an HDMI mod in here, but there should be one, two, three, four that you would normally take out. In this case, there's only two because I've already done that modification. Now we'll spin it around again one last time and we'll see five screws on this side. So take all those out. And now with those taken out, we can go ahead and just like we do with the lid, just lift off the whole disk drive. So grab it by the sides and just pull up and it should come right off. And we can put that aside with our cover. I just wanted to pause for a moment there and show you the difference between the 101 and the 001. Here on the left with the 101, the difference is that you'll have to solder on both the top and the bottom in this area here where side A is and on the bottom half where this MX chip is. I will have a guide in the top right when I do finish it in the eye or in the description, but for today we'll be focusing on the 001. So for that, we're going to go ahead and take out the top screws. You'll need the Phillips 1 for that. Okay, so with the screws removed, we now need to remove the heat sink. So to do that, you can wiggle it a bit. It's gonna to wanna to stick. We don't really wanna tear the pads underneath. It doesn't use thermal paste, it uses thermal pads. But sort of like you would with a computer, you're just trying to get this off. Um, I don't recommend sliding it too much, but it should, there you go, unbuckle eventually with just a little bit of back and forth twisting. Now, what's good here is we haven't damaged the pads. Mine are all intact. That's good. If you want to, you could even put saran wrap or something over that to protect it. I kind of want to get this one off, but it's not really going to affect anything. Um, let me see if I can get it off. Alcohol, I'm going to use a fibrous cloth to begin with, and then I'll use a non-fibrous cloth afterwards. Just wipe that down. Okay, so I've also just marked the points that I will be soldering to just for your visual reference. But again, reference the guide if you're doing this yourself, um, just in case something does happen to change, but it shouldn't for this particular portion. Um, and I'm going to be using 30 gauge ribbon, or attempting to be using, I may change my mind in a moment, to just go along and solder these up. And I'm gonna solder the GameCube first and then run it out the front to the Pico boot from there, and that should give me enough leeway so I can snip off what I don't need later on. Um, otherwise, should be good to go. It's going to get loud, so I'm probably going to turn off the audio and just do a recording because I have to put the fume extractor on for my own lungs sake. So let's go ahead and do that. Doing a voiceover for this section here. What you see me do is apply some flux to the points that I've added more solder to. Uh, the strategy I'm going for is I'll be able to just reheat that excess solder and flux and flow the wires in directly without having to hold the wire, the solder, and then heat this all together. It's a bit annoying to do for this type of situation, so I find this a little bit easier. Um, your mileage may vary, uh, but that's the strategy I'm using here. You can see I just finished soldering up the GP67 and 4 pins. Now I'm doing the ground pin right here. I'm going to add a little bit extra solder as I was describing, and then I'm going to get the wires split apart. I wouldn't recommend using a ribbon cable. I would recommend just using a 28 or 30 gauge wire. You see I've tacked it into place. Gonna add a little extra flux there and then heat that up and flow it into place nicely. And now I'm gonna do the same for the 3v3 and five there, or 3v3, I mean three volt rail. Solder that in, and then I'm gonna do the same for the three volt rail, reheat it with that flux on there, it should flow in nicely. 
And once that's done, now I'm just going to check to see that it fits, put the disk drive on to make sure nothing snags. And I think we're ready to go ahead with the Raspberry Pi end of the soldering. Quick thing I forgot to show, don't forget to bridge the two ground pins right there. I did it off camera and forgot to show, so there it is right there. Now, moving on to the Raspberry Pi itself, um, I recommend having a helping hand tool for this. Go ahead and hold the Raspberry Pi in one arm of the helping hand, and then hold the wire in the other. In this case, I'm not using the other arm for the ribbon cable because it sort of holds itself with how much bending ability there is there. So I just soldered in GP4, and now I'm soldering in GP5. An extra challenge I have is actually arranging all the wires in the ribbon. But again, if you did individual wires, this wouldn't be a problem, but you will probably have to use another arm from the helping hand tool. So you can see I'm splitting off that GP6 and 7 pin, and I'm about to solder it in. Just soldering it into GP6 there. And then I'm going to solder a bridge. What I'm going to use is just a leg of an LED or something like a leg of a resistor. And I'm just going to add some solder and flow it in place. And it's going to be a bit too far down, but then I'm just going to reheat it, pull it back up, and then bend it on over. And then solder that onto the GP6 pin as well, and then make sure it's nicely flowed onto GP7 as well. And we'll cut that in just a little bit, but we'll leave it for now. Now we're going to try to arrange the ground pin. I cut there just because you won't have the same problem if you don't use a ribbon, um, but I had to arrange the wire, so I cut there. And now we're just soldering in that ground pin, same sort of technique. You can hold it with the helping hand tool, and then that should be good. And now I'm going to solder in the 3 volt supply. Just again, got to try and finagle it out of the rest of the wires here. And then I'm going to solder up that 3 volt pin right there. Same technique. The rest of the wires, since they're a group, will hold it together. And then I'll put it in place. Now, while we're here, we can trim off that excess little leg from the LED and pull it off. Now we just have a bridge on 6 and 7. Now we need to put the GameCube back together. Same way we took it apart, but in reverse. Make sure that you do clean off the CPU, RAM, and GPU with that non-fibrous cloth like I mentioned at the beginning, just to make sure there's nothing left over on there. And then we can put our heatsink back on with those pads intact. If they're not intact, I will try to include in the description the size of pads that you need if you want to get some replacements. And then I will screw that down. And then we can go on with the rest of the reassembly process. Here you can see that I am just drilling out the front face plate a bit. Most people will just hot glue this. You can probably just hot glue it as well, but I'm going to drill out an M2 sized hole on the front here, and then screw in two M2 screws to hold the Raspberry Pi in place. Not the most firm fit. Uh, they're going to be making their own thread in the plastic, so easily could be stripped, but this isn't going to be removed too much, and there really isn't a lot of weight coming from the Raspberry Pi, so I'm not too worried. You could also melt in some uh, M2 nuts, but I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to use some plastic threading, and that should be good enough for holding this in place. Now all that's left to do is prepare the SD card. And now I just need to prepare an SD card with whatever homebrew you want to boot on startup. I think most people are going to pick Swiss, so in this example I'm on the Swiss Git page and I'm downloading the latest release. I have a link to that in the description or you can just Google it. And then I'm going to extract that zip file there, or 7-zip file. And then I'm looking for the doll, so there should be the doll folder. And now I'm just going to insert my SD card and it should pop up once it's ready, there it is. And just to be safe, we're gonna format it. So right click and then format, and we're gonna pick XFAT because that is the best for larger files if we do intend to put some larger files on it in the future. FAT32 is a little more compatible, but we're gonna use XFAT in this case. Now we're gonna copy over that doll file, and again, you don't have to use Swiss if there's something more specific you wanna use, but copy it over and then rename it to IPL.doll, and we're good to go, and now we can eject that and if he has to be tried again try again and then put it into the GameCube. Now with the SD card in the GameCube using your method of choice uh, you can just go ahead and put it on just showing you that there is no disk installed and it should boot right away in this case it's going to be Swiss 
and we're ready to go. You really can do whatever you want from here on in, it's up to you, but this is pretty much the whole installation process. Hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next time.